Luxury shopping in the Chinese market has consistently been growing from strength to strength. And to further buttress this, it is said that consumers spent $73.6 billion on luxury goods last year. On the surface, things seem to be good and jolly, but underneath, there have been some dark shadows lurking. And it has been that way for a while now. It is well known, but yet, people don't seem to talk about it. And even if they do, it is usually in hushed tones. In this video, we'll be going deep into the practices of the Chinese luxury market and the dark side no one wants to talk about. China-based consumers have been spending even more money on luxury goods recently. According to Bain, personal luxury goods in China's mainland rose up to 36%, which is an estimated value in excess of 73 billion in 2021 from the year before that. In comparison, that is more than double the amount consumers in mainland China spent in 2019 on luxury goods. In China, there are two major demographics for their luxury consumers, and it is widely believed that virtually every single consumer either falls between the rather traditional demographic of luxury consumers, or they fall into the newer generation of consumer segment called the Gen Z, who, in more recent years, have been quite thriving. It's pivotal to mention that the Chinese market has grown to be more attractive than ever due to the continued steady flow of competition on the rise between most of the top luxury brands to meet the sky-high demand and desire for the goods. However, these same consumers have been plagued with a rather peculiar form of strategy in place by these brands regarding access to their desired goods. However, in the Chinese market for luxury wares, some unspoken practices have been going on for quite some time. Well, two, actually, and they are Pei Huo and Dai Guo. While everyone basically knows about them, it's hardly ever voiced out. In essence, they are improper, but for some reason, still widely tolerated. Interestingly, according to a lot of consumers, Hermes in particular has been one of the overwhelmingly major pioneers of one of those terms. Dai Guo and Pei Huo aren't just random words, far from it. They are part and parcel of the Chinese fashion market, as well as some other products in other departments excluding fashion, and as a matter of fact, it has even been said to be practiced in products like powdered milk. They also have completely different meanings from each other, but more often than not, they end up being an intersection. However, in the end, these two words are both commonly identified as gray areas in the trade of luxury goods. For Pei Huo, the simplest mental illustration that can be attributed to it are paywalls. Maybe that's why they even sound alike. However, the closest literal translation one can really get for Pei Huo is either accompanying products or matching purchases. In reality, what this means is that it is an unwritten and basically even an unconfirmed practice or strategy that some luxury companies impose on their customers to make purchases of a particular series or similar products or even complementary ones to then enable them access in making purchases of their desired goods. In most cases, Pei Huo is also implemented for the most valuable products in the given store. Here's an example. If a certain random customer wants to buy a bag from Hermes, a salesperson would then suggest it would be much better for him to get a product from the brand before that in order to build a sort of rapport to be among the consumers that would be given access to the particular bag, especially if it is termed to be really valuable or sought after. Outside China, the ratio for spending is said to be one to one. In essence, if that desired bag would cost $20,000, for example, the customer in question would have to buy other products worth $20,000 before getting his. A Shanghai writer called Ashley Lin made a statement about this. She claimed that the ratio in China is actually way higher. And if you think that's shocking enough, that's not even the end. She also said that the ratio can be up to double that. To put that into perspective, 
In Beijing, that same customer would have to spend $40,000 on other products like bracelets, shoes, and clothes, maybe even a bag as well, just to be able to get his or her hands on the product of their desires. Hermes may be the leading brand that uses this practice, but they aren't the only one. Other brands like Rolex, Chanel, and even Celine have been claimed to use Peihua as well, but however, none of them have ever confirmed its existence all the same. Hermes, though, only stated that the sale of the bag is at the discretion of the boutique team. However, this hasn't stopped all Chinese luxury social channels from talking about it, and why shouldn't they? After all, this secretive practice is essentially becoming too unreasonable for the customer's pocket. It has aroused multiple levels of resentment and even protests. Some really notable ones that generated a lot of traction, talk, and gossip from the media. But that is exactly where Dai Guo comes in. Basically, for customers, if Peihua is deemed to be unfair or too expensive, they get faced with only two options. They either go secondhand or practice Dai Guo. The word Dai Guo is of Mandarin origin, and in reality, it can be translated to mean buys or buying on behalf of. This term is often used to describe Chinese and sometimes even South Korean buyers who buy highly sought after products abroad only to come back home to resell them at reasonable profitable amounts while still dodging some fees and even taxes. More precisely, it is a form of purchase carried out when a Chinese person commissions some goods from another person who stays abroad for payments at a rather premium price due to overcoming the difficulties that happen during purchase. In English, the term Dai Guo is also called surrogate shopper. But really, the practice is more or less a form of proxy shopping. However, as with almost everything in life, whatever is widely regarded as a pro must also have a con. No matter how well hidden it is beneath the surface, and in the case of Dai Guo, it essentially has one con, which is the fact that Dai Guo can be used as an instrument or a channeling means for the distribution of fake products and faulty goods that may not have met the required standards for public or general uses. How did this practice even become so popular? Well, that's probably because of the same reason why it is widely viewed to be worth the risk. Dai Guo actually became quite rampant due to the prices of the goods, 